Oh man, thank you so much. Jason. Yes, sir. Uh, I mean, a lot of people would stop there, pack your bags up, and go home. Yeah. Is that not what, not what we're doing to do? Is it not? No, we got, we got a powerhouse panel happening. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I just went like this. Theater of Secrets. Um, so, yeah, so what do you say? I'm very excited about this next panel. Are you ready to introduce them? Yeah, let's hear it. Yeah, now, by the way, since I'm new, do we start with the song? No, we start with, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, well, then I'm going to take notes again. I'm just going to watch. Okay, so take notes. You go. Are you ready for Kim Rose? Bring to lose weight and how you adjust to that mentally? Right. Okay. I only, ha I only have heard of it. Okay. And nailed it. Um, listen, I think that there's, there's so much that we could delve into in the conversation of body image. Uh, we were actually just talking a little bit about this in the green room. Uh, Lisa and I have just, uh, at, at some point in the past, we had convinced ourselves, or I convinced myself, that there was things I was not allowed to wear as a woman of a certain size, and now <laughs> you could not get a crop top off of me. I'm always showing off my body. Um, and 
it's just kind of, I think that what happens when you lose weight is you assume that everything's going to be okay. You assume that the world is going to be different because you've lost part of your body that you decided you didn't like. And that's, that's not the reality. The reality is, is that all of those feelings that you felt about yourself will still be alive in you even though that body weight is gone. So that's proof to something Kim and I talk a lot about in the podcast, uh, is that you've got to do the work. you got to do all the work. And the work does not just look like going to the gym. The work looks like talking to yourself kindly in the mirror, no matter what you look like. And, and you know what? A lot of that stuff comes from the outside, too. You know, there's the landscape of what is an expectation of a woman and a woman's body, what the expectation of it to look like is very different now than it was even five years ago. You look at someone like Lizzo Beating, who's, who's just, yeah, yeah, unabashedly showing her body. And I mean, there's probably haters out there, but for the most part, people are like, fuck, finally, you know? Um, so if I can be up here and be a, a woman who is just owning her body, no matter what size it is, and if you can in any way find that to be relatable or inspire you to do the same, then I take such pride in that. And I'm so grateful to you guys because it is such a reciprocal um, relationship. Um, so I say keep working on your body, but way, way, way more importantly, keep working with your relationship with yourself. Thank you. Enjoy my Reese's chocolate. <laughs> Hi there, how are you ladies doing today? Uh, okay, I asked the gentleman this, so I'm going to ask. This is mainly for Ms. Um, Buckmaster and Ms. Rose, but Ms. Barry, please answer. So the British men of letters, get to, uh, hot British men of letters, get together with the two hottest sheriffs, wayward sisters, add a little death in there if we want. Yes. What do you think is going to happen? <laughs> what? Get together how? this question. <laughs> I don't. David answered for both of them. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? He said what? Who was gay? Was gay? Was gay? Yeah. Oh, please. <laughs> Fuck that. What a pussy. <laughs> Someone's getting together with Donna. Oh, no, you guys. <laughs> oh, shit balls! <laughs> oh, it's like, hold on a second. There's a, there's a, there's a sand. There's a sand. Nobody actually does it take. Don't say anything. <laughs> We're on a road trip. Is well, basically we like this current panel right now. Yeah. I think they're checking our crotches, <laughs> drop each other out, I think I'm a pussy. I am yeah, I anticipate, let's see here. Uh, yes. Maybe you get hit in the back of the head a lot. And we would absolutely um, we would make an arrangement like I do with my daughter. I do a lot of like five minutes on, five minutes off. We make agreements for something that she wants to do that makes me crazy. So I'll be like, okay, well you can play. We would do that with Catch. We would say, all right, you pick yeah. the next song and then shut the fuck up for half an yeah. hour. <laughs> because there's only so much Hamilton we can all listen to. <laughs> you think Catch is a Hamilton fan? I absolutely do. The tenor parts. I right. think he might be up one. I yeah. think he prides himself on the high notes. Oh, he can dance. yeah. So yeah, I think he wants it. And the thing is, I think he's probably good enough, so we can't just kibosh 
the entire no. thing. No, we can't yeah, say this is rehearsal no. process. Yeah, so, no. we, so we deal with it, and then at some point, Jody's like, I got a gun, shut that. <laughs> Let's put death some, is in the back yeah. seat. Yeah, yeah. 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 So the death is playing, death is like, yes. every day turns to queen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. that that would be a really good episode. <laughs> Not against that episode. I love both of those actors. They're so much fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, thanks. Bye. Sometimes I think the goal of, of your questions is not so much to get the information no. that you're asking us about, it's to see the entertainment value yeah. Yeah. of us trying to come up with an answer. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so right now to get answers, I invite you to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're sitting down. Here we go. Hello. Hi. Um, this isn't my question. It's from my friend Lena. She's right next to me, but she's too anxious to ask it. Um, but she's just wondering, if you had to live in an episode of Supernatural, which one would it be and uh, why? Huh? Oh, French mistake, for sure. <laughs> Love to come in to the super set, supernatural set as Brianna and have Sam and Dean be like, What happened to you, Donna? <laughs> that would be very, very funny. You're next. Yeah, I mean, that's a good one. <laughs> I can't remember the title, but you guys have met me. I like the one where Dean can talk to the dogs. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hi. So I'm currently a theater major in college, and so I'm not acting. I'm tech. But my Woo! question is, how do you? Thank you. Yay tech. Yay tech. Um, Yay tech. What? How do you guys? How did you guys deal with the fear of going into an industry that you know is very unreliable, and just like being worried about? actually having a successful future and making a living wage. Because I'd like to Anything. actually have that. I was that. just going to say, I was like, how did we deal with that? I'm, I eat Reese's when we have, have, we'll let you know. I wear ridiculous ties. Yeah, kids, I'd say like 50% of Kim and I's conversation is, what are we going to do? <laughs> Not like, what are we going to do, but as in like, you know, individually, just like, you're constantly I, I feel like I'm constantly chasing and then reminding myself to let go. That's kind of all I'm doing is I'm panicking and then reminding myself that it's all going to work out. And when it doesn't work out, which inevitably shit's not going to work out, you learn to be okay with that too. It's just this constant, constant conversation of going, you're going to be okay. While also chasing your fucking dreams. You know? <laughs> conversation of you are already okay like when 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 I think oh it might not work out what I actually mean is oh it might not work out the way I think it should and I'm not in charge man so the only way I do it is I give myself permission to be happy now then I did it then I win and if this next second you're still giving yourself permission to be happy and if you get in new information and you think, oh, well now something different will make me happy. And you are happy now, then too. That's the goal, man. Just be happy. Woo! I'm gonna steal your answer from just amazing shit you say. <laughs> um, fears are not facts. Right. And I'll leave it at that. That's not original. For all of you who know where that comes from, yeah. I'm not claiming. I'm not claiming credit for that. But she said it. But it's so beautiful. intensely to my eyes and into my soul. Yeah, she does that. That's it. In fact, uh, everybody should go and get a photo op with Kim later today, where she intensely looks into your eyes. So <laughs> yours are not facts. <laughs> Hang it on your wall. It's like a little inspirational poster. Oh, that's right. 
I'm gonna make you famous, Rose. Okay, uh, hello. Hi, so I wanted to ask, you guys recently celebrated the catcher, catcher, catcher. I'm oh, sorry, the recess is kicking in. Okay, yes. Since I got such a good look at them, I like your boots, by the way. Oh, thank you. But, the red boots, they have their own Instagram profile, I'm just kidding. But, um, you guys recently celebrated the first year anniversary of the Wayward Woo! We all did. We all did it together. So, and by celebrated, I mean actually we had two big, huge plans. Neither of which we keep. We keep scrapping our plans. Keep scrapping. But something's gonna happen. We promise. <laughs> well, I wanted to ask, um, how have your feelings about it and your experiences recording the episodes changed over that year? Like, how has it changed and evolved? Oh, yeah. Okay. So my first response. Well, it wasn't my first response. V came to me and she's like, okay, I have an idea, don't answer now. Which always means my initial answer is probably gonna be, yeah. I don't wanna. And that was my initial response, was that sounds hard and I don't want to. I don't want it. It sounds really, really hard. Um, uh, my response now is that all of the stuff that I was scared to do, I actually completely geek out on. I am the one who edits. The, uh, Brianna keeps going, you can send them to me. I'll act, no, that's mine! <laughs> I'm the one who knows how to hold, find, hold music. That is my job. Oh, that's true. I could not, I could edit it, but I could not find cool hold music. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, I, so I would say it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be, and it's a lot more fun than I was hoping it would be. So that's how I should put it. What's the great thing about the podcast for me? and what I thought would be the great thing for Kim, and she can reflect on her experience, but um, after the show didn't get picked up, <laughs> yeah, you fucking get angry. Get out of your system and then we move on. That's what we do, right? Yeah. Um, contracted for a show, you, a pilot, you get contracted for a certain amount of time because then they try to do things after, if it doesn't get picked up by a network, they try to go another network or they want to hang on to you for something, 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 whatever. So we were under contract until July and I remember the convention, it was in Chicago last year and I sat Kim down in a very quiet room and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna low light suggest soft. things to you. And I said, I don't want you to answer right now. But basically I was like, look, we have something. And I mean the communal we. I said, we as a group, as the, you know, the wayward movement, have something that is unique and is important. And the voices need to be heard. And I don't, I recognize it's just Kim and I's voice right now with some guests on the podcast, but um, they were a reflection of you, and they were a ref reflection of things we know you guys want us to talk about and want to hear and want more people to talk about. And anybody that kind of comes up to my table and, or talks to us at a PJ party says, thank you so much for talking about this thing, for talking about periods, for talking about masturbation, for talking about fear, you know, all this shit that we need to talk about more. We never would have been able to, honestly, we wouldn't have been able to talk about that stuff had the pilot gone. They're very specific about what you're allowed to publicly say. It wouldn't like me talking about how I get off three times a night. <laughs> anyway, that's not my point. My point is, um, we got to do the podcast because you guys had things to say that were important. Kim and I get to be the voice of you guys. That's really what it is. And uh, it is an honor, and it is uh, something we take very seriously, and if it wasn't, I recognize that I brought the idea to Kim, but Kim really is the muscle behind it. She's the one that keeps things going, and she's the one that um, and, and often initiates a topic and a conversation, and I'm so grateful that she's my partner in this, and that we are moving all of this together, and you, you guys don't even know about them awesome uh, fucking uh, things. Uh, 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 do the thing, say the thing. No. Now's the time, say the thing. Now? Say the thing. Say the thing. Oh, I'm tearing up. Say the thing. <laughs> well, 
Well, Kim and I's, uh, the, the Wayward Podcast is now represented by a booking agent out of New York City. And, uh, starting next year, Kim and I are going to start doing live podcasts. excited for many many reasons but it just is like it's just such a huge comment as to when people try to control things that you create that are incredibly authentic um, they can't they can't and this this group this room is a testament to that okay so we shall live on forever in your ears, in your office cubicles, in your cars. And possibly when you're trying to figure out how a vibrator works. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. You know how I feel we about that. this. Oh my. Okay. So that's that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. So one big fan. Thank you. And two, this is a question to all of you. Love it. So what is your basically like... Yeah. Um, the most memorable part in your entire careers. Whoa. Good one. Um, I do. I think it's probably supernatural related. Uh, I have a few of them, and that I feel very grateful because not because they were so great, because I think booking a role in Supernatural was inherently better than booking a role straight out of theater school, but they felt the same. You know, because your bubble of experience is smaller when you're younger. Um, I got, I, I auditioned for the, the role of Rizzo in Greece, straight out of school, and I didn't get it, and I was so sad, and I was so, so sad, and I remember rehearsing a separate show with a bunch of the actors who were in the big show Greece, and I was so sad, and I was so happy for them, but just sad that I didn't get the part. And then they were in rehearsals for Greece. And I got a phone call saying, the woman who was cast as Rizzo hurt herself. Are you available? Oh. So I ended up getting the part. I was the youngest person in the cast. And I ended up getting the part like halfway through the rehearsal period. So you never fucking know. Also related to that, and then I'll shut up, I promise. Um, Supernatural, I had just been working in television for, or auditioned for television for a few months. I got a role, an audition for a role in Supernatural for nurse number two. <laughs> and I didn't get it, and I was so sad. And the next audition was for Sheriff Donna. <laughs> so you never know, if I had gotten nurse number two, I wouldn't have even been able to audition for Sheriff Donna. Oh, thank so, you. thank God, thank God. Amen. Uh, mine would have to be supernatural just because of just the serendipitousness of it all. Um, I, I did not audition for Billy, which is bizarro world. Um, I initially went in, first let me give you the prequel. I would auditioned for the show for about 10 years. <laughs> Follow your dreams. Because <laughs> you were a huge fan of the show. I, was a huge, I mean, when the show first started, I was like, oh my god, that's the guy from Gilmore Girls, and he's going to be so bad. watch. And, um, and so I started watching and I just remember sitting there and being like, man, I feel like I could be on this show. I mean, we look like we have fun. We could get along. And an audition would come and I would be like, no. But then I'd see who'd get it and I'd be like, oh, they're so perfect and they're amazing. That makes a lot of sense. And that happened for about 10 years. And then one year I found myself living in Vancouver and I got to go into the room and audition for Jensen and Bill Screechy, one of our, the executive producers, which I did not know that they were going to be there. I thought it was just going to be a casting director and I was just going to put myself on tape. And there was a, two rows of, of women lined up waiting to audition. And Jensen was running late because he was filming. And the minute he walked into the room, everybody was like, <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> It was like, he was 
shy. It was so, it was so amazing. And I just sat there being like, okay, Lisa, you gotta get used to this. You gotta get used to this. You gotta be totally chill. Just run your arms. You're gonna call your name and just be present. Just be present. Just be, hey, 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 wake up. There you go. There you go. You're back. See how that works? Lisa, yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. And so I go into the audition room and I do my, I do my first scene and it was for one of the witches for the mega coven with Ruth. And I was like, really, I was like, ooh, this is gonna be good, I like it, yeah. And I went in and I was all strong. I was like, don't fuck with me, yo. And then, and then Jensen was like, got this whole like, don't fuck with me, yo, vibe. And really, what we want is they're like, oh, don't fuck with me, vibe. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. Fuck, she could come in softer. Jesus, we said, get it together. And so I went in, I did the note, and I was like really happy, and Jensen and, and Bill were really happy, and I left, and I called my girlfriend, and I was like, oh my God, I just worked with Jensen! And I swear to God, we celebrated like I got the part. To me, that was enough. I was like, I was in the room with him. I did my scene. He gave me a note, which is technically working with someone. And as I technically worked with him, I said, we go have pizza and cake, okay? Okay! It was so real. And at my friend's job, where she was working, there was like a big cardboard cutouts of Jensen and Jared. So it was so real. The fan girling was so real. And then I got a call saying, you didn't get the part, and I was like, I'm used to this, it's okay. And they're like, but there's this other character that they were thinking you actually might be quite good for. And they haven't released the breakdown, but they liked what you were able to bring and thought you would fit really well with it. And then they'd ask my managers if I sang, and so we sent them off something of me singing, and then we, and then they were like, okay, so the character's name is Billy, we need her to be able to sing a little bit, and it's just one scene, and I'm like, are you kidding me? I feel like a fan who want to walk on roll. <laughs> so, so I was just totally down for it, whatever it is that they wanted, and, and because of that, and like not many roles kind of unfold like that, usually there's an audition process and there's a waiting game, but this was we've actually already been writing something and we were waiting for the person to come in who was it. And even though I was doing a different audition, they were like, well, that character we know we're gonna, we're gonna kill by the end of the episode and we don't want to kill you right away. And so I was like, okay. I didn't know what they were talking about with this right away, but you know, eventually I was gonna get mine. I was gonna get mine no matter what, but uh, <laughs> But yeah, so I would say Supernatural because I don't have a story like that for anything else that I've ever heard. Uh, so I've never heard that story. Oh, it's a good story. <laughs> Viola in an outdoor production of Twelfth Night. Thank you. <laughs> Poor friend. She's like, one of these bitches gonna shut up? <laughs> I like the dance, but this, I like it. I like listening. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to thank you for speaking up about uh, mental health and uh, body image. I think it's very important, uh, important for um, public figures to um, share thoughts about those issues. And I have a question for the three of you. Um, how did you deal with uh, the public, the public risk and risk health? Uh, the public response uh, of, about your characters, like uh, have you had any critiques, any uh, bad stuff said about uh, the, the sheriffs or death? Yeah, that's it. How do we deal with public response? Response. 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 I heard restaurants and I was like, oh, I like restaurants. <laughs> do you speak French, Lisa? No. Oui, je sais petit peu. Okay, la réponse du public. Can you translate that, please? <laughs> How do you deal with the public response to your character? Whatever, Lisa. <laughs> I don't know, that's how she deals with it. No, she's not the answer. Kim, you take, you start. Um, I, I, I don't go looking for it. I'm a big fan of it is my responsibility where I rest my gaze. And it's up to me to choose to look at things that take care of my heart. for some shit talk. That is not a challenge. You don't need to work harder. 
Um, but I give myself permission to ignore things that I disagree with, to think about things that I agree with. Also, I don't write the character, so a lot of it's like, not my problem, you're talking to the wrong person. Um, and finally, the only specific instance I can give was a surprisingly beautiful thing where someone um, who had lost a child thanked me for representing an experience as a character that she had had in real life. And I forget that just because it's imaginary to me doesn't mean it's imaginary in this world. So it reminds me to commit authentically, to love fully, and to be respectful of whatever the material is because someone out there needs to hear it and I love them for that. So that's what I do. Opinions of you are theirs and not yours. Amen. Uh, but that does take work and practice, and I encourage all of you to keep on working on that. Um, if you are kind and you are being who you are, and you are you are offering everything you can to this world and to others, sometimes people, no matter what, will find a problem with that. Sometimes I find solace in going. There's people that hate Oprah. There's people that hate Beyonce. Why? It doesn't matter. That's and look at them. Do they look sad? No. They're doing okay. So be like Oprah. She doesn't give a fucking shit. Merci beaucoup pour cette question. Merci à vous. Whatever you guys. Are you okay? Lisa, do you, don't you want to answer uh, the question? I, I'm, I mean, I'm in, I'm in total agreement with these beautiful women here who I look to for guidance and inspiration because I've really learned how to be on social media from them. You know, yeah, no, but you know I love how you guys are. I appreciate the transparency. I appreciate the level of vulnerability you're willing to share with the fans and, and just, Anybody who might, because there are a lot of times people, they're like, I, I didn't even know you were on a show. I just started following you because of the messages. You know, I use the hashtag mindfulness, hashtag bliss, and they're like, found ya. No idea that was supernatural. And so they really have been really great examples of how to be, how to encourage, how to support. And I've taken a lot of a lot of lead from them, and uh, I think they're pros, and they do it in a really beautiful, respectful, open, vulnerable, goddess-like way. I just need to point out that it is unnerving how much of a missing person's photo Jason Manns looks like in the background. Yeah. It looks like the largest milk carton in the world. Have you seen this man? Just like, just robbed a convenience store. Poor guy. But he was like, probably forced to. Yeah, exactly. He looks sad, angry, and a little scared. <laughs> Uh, anything. Hello. Hello. First of all, Kim, I really like your tights or stuff. Yes. Pussy tights forever. <laughs> also, uh, questions for all three of you. What are your guys' favorite characteristics of your characters? Favorite characteristics of our characters. 
I like that Donna is flawed. I love that she um, has not quite figured out what her place is in the world and still chooses to see the good people no matter what. Um, I would say my favorite quality about death is that she's a singer on the side. <laughs> Wherever she can get it in. She has hobbies! She, she, does. Does. she does, she does. Um, it's a, it's, it's a, I love that just little fact about her. Um, and uh, I would say one of my favorite qualities about her is just how grounded she is. She just knows how to collect herself and be like a tree in the face of anything that she doesn't believe in, and she will stand her ground and she will be poised enough to articulate herself in a way that makes herself feel like she's at least been heard. And I like that. And when you rehearse that kind of a character, you know, you gotta, you know, you, I gotta sit in it too. And so it kind of bleeds into my life nicely. Like whenever I need a little bit of strength, you're just like, just be Billy right now. And you're like, right. <laughs> Your answers, from my outsider perspective, are part of the character because they're what you brought to them. Like that—that that is not that is not in the cage. That is like there ain't nothing that's going to unsparkle Brianna Buckmaster. And no, fuck no, it's still in there. God damn it! It might make me shake it up a little bit like a snow globe, but it's still in there. And so, and with. One of my favorite things about the way you play Death is that she is not a bad guy. She is a force of nature. There is no judgment behind what you need to do. It simply must be done. And it would be so easy to be like, mwah ha ha, I'm Death. Mwah ha. <laughs> Since I'm twirling my mustache. <laughs> Save it for the gag reel, Barry. <laughs> um, and to vaguely answer your question, I love about Jody the fact that she has been kicked in the face so many fucking times and she's still like, this is gonna hurt. All right. <laughs> an episode of Supernatural. Yeah. And I made some comment about like fake blood still being in my hair and I had to have a manicure to get it out from my and people were like, oh, you were bleeding? I'm like, yeah, it's Jody. Like, what the fuck don't I bleed anymore? Ah, this arm's been taken out three times. Okay, can we do this like this time? Because this one's still healing from last time. And I love that, but she still is like, Oh yeah, there's no, there's no illusion that she's going to come out unscathed, <laughs> ever. All right, bring the band-aids. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hi, I just want to say y'all are super awesome badass females, y'all are great. And what my lovely friend here would like to know, whether it be legal or illegal, what would each of you do for a contact bar? <laughs> Sugar, so there's really no limit. <laughs> Real addiction. What would you do for a Klondike bar? What would you do for a Klondike bar? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I'm from Canada, and if you want a Klondike bar, you just go to the store and fucking buy a Klondike bar. <laughs> somebody made me do something, I'd be like, well, fuck you, I'm just gonna have an Oreo sandwich then. <laughs> Don't you 
you tell me what I can eat and can't eat? Give me that fucking Klondike bar. Go fuck yourself, man. If you don't do it, it's not giving it to you. That's what I would do. Do you even have a Klondike bar? Well, thank you, and good night. Then. I'll send the alphabet card to find that part. Send the alphabet? That's a simple thing. That's a simple You're going to have so much ice cream in another hour? Send the alphabet. Every photo I'll send the alphabet. Someone's going to bring you ice cream. I like that. What did I do? Send the alphabet. A, B, C, D. about her in a relationship with somebody. So I'd like her to shack up with Jody. <laughs> well, see, I was like, I just, I, I would ha have this like little dream of just like death at a cabaret. You know, just, just killing people, killing people softly with her song. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jody. Hello, Jody. Um, so this one's for Liar. Kim. <laughs> I get show ID. Uh, this one's for Kim because while we were in line last night for registration, you made a very interesting tweet. Um, I had to check to see how you're doing since apparently you were awake 32 hours last night. 39! <laughs> during the night, black night time when sleepy shit happened? <laughs> no happens. No happens, because I finish and be done done, then messy messy yuck yuck. I got a sort of off home stuff and thing with the rollers and the carry stuff and the thing thing. Then the lie down noise makes stand up again, go get in car. <laughs> Time in big metal birdie place. <laughs> Flew on metal birdie, then metal birdie got very ill. <laughs> so did Kim. <laughs> but no, no, no straight line between two points. <laughs> no straight line, many curvy lines. So stopped in Windy City. <laughs> Stayed there very long, long. 
long time. <laughs> they kept saying, time to go now. And I said, on more metal bird. And they said, yes, no. <laughs> yes, now, no. Yes, 20 minute hour, three hour, no. Five hour, yes, no. Stay here, get on metal bird, get back off metal bird. <laughs> then metal bird went into sky. Then they said, you can't land metal bird. <laughs> Metal bird flew in bouncy circles. <laughs> oh. Anybody else think it sounds like beatnik poetry? <laughs> just like that, you just like start to yes. No yes. man, yeah, because then yeah, we, got on, we got on the ground, and at one point I, we were really close to the ground, and I looked out the window and saw water. You're not supposed to see water when you're that close to the ground. We're sideways! <laughs> we're straight up right. We got on the ground, but lots of other metal birds. Man, they all chose to nest at the same time. So we had to wait for our space. We had to wait for our space. Our space wasn't there yet. So we hung on, we hung on, we hung on, and then we came home. I love that. And that's why I should never do a panel when I'm fucking exhausted. Or always do a panel. Well, that was the most amazing thing ever, and we're glad to have you finally, after a very long day, go get some sleep. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to thank everyone you. who was willing to let the PJ party be postponed. Thank you. We will provide some exciting... Ooh! Hi, speaking oh. of excitement at a oh. PJ party. Hi! Oh. Hi. Is it time to go? Oh. Or can we take one more question? Let's take one more question. Let's take one more question. Hi. Hi. I just say you guys all rock. Kim, I want to say that I love your character on Supernatural, but you are such a good actress that on Criminal Minds, I hate you. Thank you. Can we get just one Donna Yvetcha? No. <laughs> oh, Yvetcha! You guys are fucking suckers. What a bunch of suckers. I'm like Ricky Gervais from Extras. Do you remember? Nobody yeah. knows. Never mind. Oh, Look it up. Look it up. Check it out. Good. Kate, great. Right. We did it. Guys, did it. good job as always. <laughs> great way to end the day on Friday. Really quick. Um, we have been talking briefly about uh, Jason Mann's terrifying picture in the back. Have you seen that picture? <laughs> Which one where? Look at how mad you are at all of us. I'm less mad, more judgmental. <laughs> Anyway, I'm glad you're not like that in real life. Let's take that picture down as soon as possible. Let's sell it. Please. 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 Please.